Hi guys, so this is the part 2 of uh, multicast routing. So in the first video we have seen the multicast overview, multicast IP addressing, then we also saw the reverse path forwarding check, how it works. In this video we will see the multicast, um, the forwarding modes like dense mode and sparse mode and also we will see uh, what are the protocols that are used in uh, multicast. So first we will see the dense mode forwarding. Uh, in dense mode forwarding, uh, the multicast uh, um, forwarding assumes that every end user in the network wants to receive the data and uh, the type of uh, data forwarding used in dense mode environment is very efficient when you know that a large number of multicast receiver exist. Uh, any router in the dense mode network may prune itself from the forwarding path by sending a message to its uh, upstream peer. So this process occurs for all routers that do not uh, uh, need to receive the multicast traffic. Let's see this topology. We have a server where the source is connected and we have only two receivers, receiver 2 and 3, which basically needs the multicast traffic. But when the multicast stream forwarded for uh, this particular um, router, it will uh, flood it to all the other router in the multicast uh, network. Um, so only receiver 2 and 3 connected router needs this uh, multicast stream uh, traffic but you can see it is going to all the other routers. So in a dense mode environment, this is how it works and uh, whatever router that doesn't have any uh, receiver uh, requesting any multicast traffic, uh, that will prune themselves and uh, after that, uh, the traffic, the multicast stream that will go only to the routers that are connected to the receiver 2 and 3. So the flood and prune process occurs in a dense mode network every 3 minutes. So this ensures that any new host arriving on the network begin to receive the multicast traffic during the nest flood process. Uh, this is good as long as you have a good amount of receiver in the network. The downside of this flood and prune is that routers have to explicitly um, you know, send a request to stop the um, you know, receiving the data stream when they have no receivers uh, connected. When you have a smaller number of receivers, you have a large number of uh, routers pruning themselves from the forwarding path. So hence the dense mode network is better suited for the environment where uh, almost all connected host uh, would uh, like to receive the data stream. So imagine if you have a, um, uh, the stock exchange kind of network where um, mostly you need a multicast uh, interesting traffic. So the dense mode will be suited for that. Then you have a uh, sparse mode forwarding. So smart mode uh, is an exactly an opposite to your dense mode forwarding. So the sparse mode multicast assumes that very few receiver exist you know in each multicast group the router in a sparse mode must explicitly uh, request the data stream to be forwarded to them additionally we have a um, um, router that performs a special function as a connection point between the source and the receiver so the this router we call it uh, rendezvous point um, rp router so once the multicast traffic from the source and the request forms uh, the receiver connect and the interview point, the traffic is forwarded through the network. So this shared tree as the RP at the top of the forwarding tree with the network segment and the receivers are the branches and leaves respectively. So this is often referred to as a point tree in a sparse point network. So let's say you have a server here and uh, it is sending the uh, multicast data stream for a particular group. Uh, those messages will get registered into your RP. And uh, when a receiver sends um, the traffic, interested traffic for that particular group, and that packet, when it reaches the RP, the RP initiates the um, uh, the connection. So from receiver, you will get the asterisk comma G, and we already know the source for which that group uh, traffic is coming. So the RP will, uh, um, you know, show the source comma G, that is S comma G, uh, to your receiver. So once the receiver knows from which uh, source uh, the traffic is coming, the receiver will start uh, sending the uh, request to directly to that uh, source. Because you can see in the topology itself, uh, the traffic has to go through this RP and then to reach uh, the source. But uh, if the receiver directly uh, reaches the source, you have only two hops in the path. So once RP gives the information SKMRG details, uh, the re uh, receivers will directly uh, reach out to your um, uh, the first hop router where the source is connected and it will forward the traffic. So uh, as you can see I given in the green lines so R2 and R3 where the receivers are connected this R2 and R3 begin to receive the multicast traffic they examine the source of the multicast traffic and find that it is the host connected to the R1 
Each router then determines whether the current forwarding path is best path to the source and neither router finds this to be the case. Both R2 and R3 then send a request to the multicast source itself asking for the group data to be sent to them directly. So in the figure R2 and R3 uh, sending request to the multicast source that is directly to R1. Once the data stream is received directly from the source, the routers prunes themselves from the shared tree that is from your RP. So this R2 and R3 will prune themselves from the RP. So this is accomplished by sending a prune message to the Randy viewpoint router and forms the shortest path tree uh, to the source router. So this green line, this path is the shortest path tree. So that's the dense mode and sparse mode forwarding uh, paradigms. Now let's see the protocols that we are uh, using, uh, you know, in uh, the multicast environment. So, so far we discussed uh, about the forwarding of traffic in a multicast network using both uh, dense and uh, sparse mode. The process involves request for the multicast traffic, prune messages advertised upstream and the knowledge of the neighboring routers. You know, all of this communication is made possible to the use of multicast routing protocols. We have a multicast protocol that operates between the host and the routers and we have a protocol that operates uh, between the network itself, that is between the routers. Let's see the host to uh, router communication protocol first. That is called the uh, internet group management protocol. So the multicast end station communicate with the network routers using the IGMP. So this protocol allows the receivers to request a multicast data stream from a particular group address, that is a multicast group address. A local router on the host subnet, the designated router, translates the request into a multicast routing protocol packet and forward it to an appropriate source of the group. The basic function of IGMP is to allow an end station to join a multicast group, remain connected to the group and leave the multicast group. So currently we have IGMP version 1, 2 and 3. So version 1 defined in RFC 1112, it provides the basic uh, uh, services to the multicast host. Uh, it allows the end station to join and remain attached to the multicast group and if you have version 2 so version 2 you have an option you know um, uh, to explicitly notify when there is no traffic uh, coming from the receiver for the multicast uh, uh, traffic it will leave that group basically and uh, that option available in version 1 and version 2 is compatible with your version 1 so version 3 uh, it's a most recent uh, modification in IGMP specification and uh, it's RFC 3376. Uh, the previous version of the protocol allows the end station to request multicast traffic for any source using asterisk comma G notation and uh, IGMP version 3 now allows the host to request for a traffic from a specific source and in addition the end system can also specify a list of sources that it should not receive the multicast traffic. And we discussed in the previous video, uh, we use this uh, segment 232.000/8 group address range for the sports specific multicast so anywhere when you run a command show command in the multicast network and you see this ip you will come to know that um, that uh, pim ssm um, uh, source specific multicast is in place then you have uh, protocol independent multicast so this is the protocol that is actually operating between the routers, the multicast routing. Um, the multicast uh, PIM arises from the fact that it, it relies on other uh, sources of routing information. Basically it does that uh, RPF check uh, using the uh, normal uh, routing protocol like OSPF or BGP. So the PIM operational modes are now completely separate protocol specification where each PIM router maintains state information that includes the upstream interfaces, the RPF interface, the downstream interfaces and the multicast group either uh, ASCII's comma G or uh, S comma G notations. Let's see some of the message types that PIM uses. Uh, so the PIM hello message that is your type code 0, it is addressed to 224.0013. It's a group address for all PIM routers. All PIM routers uh, listen to this uh, multicast uh, uh, IP and consume the packet. Then you have uh, PIM register message. It's a type code 1. It is unicast to the randv point for the uh, multicast domain. Then you have PIM register stop message. This is type code 2 and it is a unicast to router connected to the multicast source. Then you have PIM uh, join prune message. It's a type code 3. 
it sent to again to the same uh, pim multicast ip 224.0.0.13 uh, the all pim uh, routers to create or remove uh, the state in the uh, network okay now next we will see the multicast uh, configuration and uh, verification uh, this is the lab setup i have um, i'm using the cisco devices uh, asr 1k and uh, asr 7k the multicast uh, configuration and verification uh, we will see in the next video the mul multicast routing part 3 video and make sure you click on the subscribe button and the bell button so that uh, when i upload the video you will get an alert